Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Todd coming at you from Todd Self Zone, and we're doing another episode of Living Your Best Life. I want to thank everybody for viewing this afternoon, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, what we do on this show is we actually invite a passionate health and wellness and or fitness expert onto the show to talk about what they do and how they're contributing to a healthier society. So that's what we do on this show. And this is my awesome and beautiful wife here, health coach, nutrition coach, Miss Jennifer. So if she can share a little bit about what she does, and we'll get on to, get on to our guest for this afternoon. Yes, as he said, I'm Jennifer Cheek. Uh, I am a certified uh, nutrition coach with Precision Nutrition, just really helping people uh, understand a holistic way of eating, having a healthy relationship with food and themselves. That's important, um, you know, but to really give good education on not only macronutrients, micronutrients, and how to treat our bodies well for optimal wellness, immunity, and long life. All righty. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chani. So like I said, what we do on this show is we invite a passionate health and wellness uh, expert onto the show to speak about what they're doing in their, their particular business and how they're contributing to a healthier society. And we're not stopping with those individuals. We got a powerful individual coming up today. I've had the opportunity to speak with her and we can speak actually like all night. We had the opportunity to speak about a couple of weeks ago and just talking about, you know, uh, just life in general. And mm -hmm. I, I, I can, you know, I, like I said, I can speak with her all night. Now, mind you, we just kind of met, you know, over the past month or so with the rest of this online medium. Uh, and so I'm still trying to pronounce her name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so work with me here. I am going to attempt it here. Nakikia. 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 All righty. Almost. This those, this where those little accents come You in. can call me Nikki from here. Oh, man. Oh, oh, God. God. So We're now family. Because my family and friends call me Nikki. All right, so you can call me Nikki from now. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Thank you, Nikki. I was like trying to say, like, please let there be like a shorter version. So either Kia or Nikki or something. It's about to be Kiki. We get that. Lord. Not the Kiki, okay? <laughs> but hey, welcome and thank you so much for uh, sharing and being a part of our show this evening or mm -hmm. this afternoon, but wherever people are in the world, but thank you for being a part of our show this mm -hmm. evening. And uh, we look forward to listening and learning from you today. Well, I, it, I'm going to try not to be emotional because I'm a waterhead, but oh, okay. uh, <laughs> I do appreciate the uh, opportunity, the, the invitation to, you know, just pretty much I'm just sharing, you know, my own personal journey. I, I don't consider myself like, a, like an expert uh, or anything like that, but I'm, I am very passionate about, you know, the journey that I'm on. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in going on this path, I realized that I want to bring other people with me to mm -hmm. start their journey to healing. Mm -hmm. And it's a lifelong thing. It's, healing is a continuous process. Right. And I realized that for myself. And so, I, I know that there are so many other people who look like me and you who need um, somewhere they can go and feel safe um, mm -hmm. to start their healing process. So I, I appreciate, I mean, this is, as this came out of nowhere. Well, yeah. I know, <laughs> Lord, thank you, Jesus. There you go. <laughs> he's, he, I'm just telling you, he's showing out here. Okay. Always. He's been <laughs> showing out and awesome. I am grateful. I'm humbled. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm like, okay, okay, that's a G. Okay, God, I'll open up the door. Right on through. Okay, nervous or not, I'm going to do it. But yeah, thank you yeah. so much for the invitation. Of course, of course. Now, you know that you are an expert on your life. You know, I your, will. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, I will I will grant you that for sure. <laughs> and uh, like, like we have spoken one time before, uh, you know, you have that book inside of you. And I guess you have so much information. And once again, I want to say thank you for, you know, uh, being present on today's uh, uh, program and uh, Zoom here. Now, so tell us a little, about, little bit about who you are and, you know, what attracted you to the whole uh, mental and emotional wellness uh, platform. Well, uh, my name is my real name. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, uh, I'm Nakikia Wilson. Um, I'm, I have three children. Uh, we live in, live here in Durham. Um, um, and I'm from a small town called Kinston, North Carolina. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I 
I left Kenton, of course, I went to uh, college and I graduated from Winston-Salem State University in 1998. Then I went on some years later to, uh, after working in television for a while, I, I realized that I, I don't have the heart um, for, that, for that type of job because it, it was so cutthroat and so, um, I, I just didn't enjoy it. It did not do my heart good. So I mm -hmm. left the industry and got into healthcare um, after that. And so uh, a few years after that, I went to start, I went to um, Strayer University and got a master's degree in, um, oh, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I'm trying not to be emotional because I'm just so excited. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. a master's degree in health, health services administration. Right. I currently work for the D Department of Veteran Affairs um, here in Durham at the hospital. I'm a certified medical support assistant. That's my day job. My passion um, grew from a, you know personal experiences when it comes to uh, mental and emotional health. You know, my childhood was I can't say it was the absolute worst, but it was unhealthy. Um, mm -hmm. The environment in which I grew up in, my uh, family, very toxic behaviors. We're talking about addictions, um, drugs, uh, mental and, and emotional abuse um, chronically. And so, you know, growing up in that, you take that with you into your adult life. Yeah. Um, I ended up, I got married uh, and it was, it was, it was, uh, it wasn't a bad marriage. It really was not. It was actually pretty good. I learned a lot. Um, but, you know, we came to a crossroads and then we just make the decision whether you're going to stay in it because of kids or because of what family thinks are you going to live your best life for mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. um and so i you know decided that you know what I, I i need to get to know who i am um i was diagnosed with mental uh with, with some mental illnesses panic attack um disorder anxiety ptsd mm -hmm. i have add mm -hmm. <laughs> so all I mean, the alphabets I mean, I mean, all the alphabets okay a b c d e f g okay i got them <laughs> um so i know what really was the catalyst for for me right now was me i had a uh an, a, an anxiety panic attack behind the wheel of my truck and i had my family in the car with me i'm on the road driving and mm -hmm. had to pull over because I could not get it myself together. Mm -hmm. I knew at that point I needed to see somebody. And that this was after being diagnosed with um, multiple sclerosis. I had multiple sclerosis as well. Mm -hmm. And so with all this being said, um, I, that, that's where it all came from. It's just the need to feel and be better. Mm -hmm. um, and going to therapy, you know, opened the door for me to want to help other people as well. So I learned all I can learn to help me first because I can't help anybody if I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Wow. And so that's why I'm so passionate about people not suffering in silence and people speaking their truth and letting the people in, 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 in our community know it's okay not to be okay. Mental yeah. illness is not a, a weakness it's a sickness right. and it's something that needs to be dealt with you could be med medicated some people don't have to have it you just need to be able to be healed from it and it's okay to talk about it mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't talk about mental illness in our in our community, in our community uh, right. we definitely don't deal with emotions um, mm -hmm. the way that we should it's very toxic mm -hmm. if yeah. you if you will it's just a very toxic um just way of being. And that's yeah. what we've grown in, grown up knowing. That's what, it's generation after generation of mm -hmm. toxic behaviors and attitudes, especially towards uh, mental and emotional health. Yeah. And so that's why I'm like, you know what? If I have to use myself as uh, the guinea pig, I will. Because <laughs> I want people who, who I'm, I'm just a regular person, right. blessed by God. I work hard and I want people to know that in uh, in my same um, you know it's have my same experiences. Mm -hmm. They they t have someone who 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 can represent them and they can see. Oh, okay. Well, you okay? Um, well, I am not alone. Okay, there is someone who's on my level, who 
works hard and works every day and has kids and ha- you know and live mm-hmm. an everyday normal life yeah. that can actually talk about the experiences of mental and emotional health challenges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's great. I mean, it's an amazing um, journey that you've had to wellness, and that you know, as you say, the, the journey does not end. You know, we're all <laughs> on this path. You know, it is it is enjoying the journey because we never really quite arrive at the destination until God calls us home. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's, that's, so that's we're, it. We're always on this path. I hear you saying mental and emotional. Can you break down for everybody what you feel like the difference is between mental and emotional health? Well, we normally use those terms interchangeably. For me, um, technically there are differences in the two terms. You know, mental health deals with the way the brain or the mind processes information Mm-hmm. or experiences that you have. Emotional health is more of that, how you're feeling, how you control and how you manage uh, the, the, uh, the feelings that you have from information that you've learned or from the experiences that you have. So there is, there is a difference. So mental health mm-hmm. deals with the process, how the brain processes and receives and, and processes the information. Whereas mm-hmm. your emotional dealings is, is how you feel how you control uh, and being aware of what you're feeling at the time. But for me, I know, I believe that they, one affects the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now Mm -hmm. you can have good emotional, uh, good mental health and still struggle emotionally, or you can have good emotional health Mm -hmm. and be struggling Mm -hmm. mentally. For Mm -hmm. example, um, Anxiety. <sighs> I can tell it's being aware and how you feel. That's where the emotions come in. I'm like, okay, I don't feel right. So oh, I don't feel. And I could tell what's going on. I'm like, I'm getting ready to have an anxiety attack. I need to. Mm-hmm. That's where you, that's where the difference is. Right. You, you, your, my mind is seeing, is, is processing, receiving information that it's not processing right, right for some, whatever reason. And I can feel myself becoming, getting, up, starting to get ready to cry or get ready to uh, start getting mad or something like that. And yeah. so I have to work to combat the anxiety. Also, you know, making sure my emotional uh, emotional being is, is, is stable as well. But yeah. one can affect the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always say that sometimes the longest distance for people is that distance from the head to the heart. I use that a lot of times, even in my relationship with God, that there are things I know about God, but my feelings are telling me something different. Mm -hmm. And that's a long journey. It's less than a foot. But some people really never get things from up here to really in the heart where it affects how we are. I love how you said that, you know, it is how we manage, how we control, you know, those things. That's very key because I can think one thing, but how it pours out of me, (laughs) whether whether out of my mouth or in my actions, may not necessarily be informed by what's going on up here and that it is hand in hand. I appreciate you saying, you know, that they re- that one really does affect. Mm-hmm. The other. Yeah. I like to say the heart in them that when, when your brain and your heart don't match, it's just a mixed match going on. Some of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To try to get that to sync up. I'm pretty sure is a challenge. Yeah. It you know, is. It, yeah. For, for, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that most people will, you know, find that as a, a, a real struggle in life to try to sink the two. And like you said, that's the longest, you know, travel between the, you know, the, the, the mind and the heart. Um, and, you know, moving into kind of like my area, so to speak, um, uh, when it comes to, I see you, you're wearing your, your shirt there, you know, uh, walking into wellness. Walk into wellness. <laughs> and, and so, you know, if, if you, if you uh, are on, uh, the social media platforms such as Facebook, you know, you can you can pick up on, uh, you know, Nikki's. Um, did I get that name right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know we were throwing some names out there, and I didn't want to make make the mistake right? <laughs> the wrong one. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here whispering like no one's going to hear this. Um, <laughs> but you can any on any given day, you might catch her, you know, outside walking. You know, getting that because one time you say it's going to be cold or whatever. So you just show your dedication, Ooh. yeah, your dedication. You know, just to getting out there and doing some exercise. Because what happens is when all of 
of these things, if you're building up so much uh, negative energy, you mm -hmm. know, because you're having all of these, you know, these emotional and or mental issues, uh, that's going to elevate, you know, certain hormones in the body, mm -hmm. such as cortisol. And cortisol can have a negative, too much cortisol in the body can have a negative effect on your overall health and well-being, especially in the uh, weight gain area. So if you don't have anything to actually counter that, such as exercise, something like that, you're just going to, it's just going to be that ongoing, you know, loop. And so with you, you know, how does, um, how does exercise, how have you, how, how has exercise helped you in the area of either emotional and or mental? Okay, I said, but aside from decreasing the fluff, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 I use, because I, I couldn't stand to go outside. Yeah. I am not outside. No, don't want to mm -hmm. be out there. Mm -hmm. And it's something just, I, I was watching a friend of mine, her name is Takima Parsons. And you might know mm -hmm. of her, the Zumba queen. And she's for also from Kingston. Yeah. And she's been doing these slim downs and these Zumba. And I've been watching. Like, mm -hmm. just watching. Mm, I, I know I need to get out there and do it. I, but I was just watching. But one day I just said, you know what? Let me just go out here and just walk it. So I had to fi figure out when to walk because of if my MSI. Extreme hot, extreme cold. I have to be careful. Mm -hmm. So when it was hot, when summertime was around i started walking um about 7 seven thirty, um because the sun start going going down a little bit and the heat will uh the mm -hmm. temperatures would decrease so i just said you know i'm gonna start walking i'm gonna just i started with with this 30 minutes uh or doing a mile and then i started with you know i will increase it to to uh two miles um next thing i know i was I had done five miles and I didn't even realize. I'm like, wait a minute, did I just walk five miles? One day I walked mm -hmm. 10 miles. I'm like, what the? Okay, I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, okay, I think I might. Yeah, where like, am I? <laughs> right, like, what's going to do? It's the twilight zone. <laughs> but I, I now I, I, I walk at least five miles when I, when I, when I do go out and walk. That's just the, a 10K plus a day is my thing. Um, and I just oh. made that dedication for myself. Um, walking for me, uh, helps me. I it, I call it just meditation walking. Um, mm -hmm. I just use that time to. Sometimes I'm listening to music. Sometimes I'm just walking and listening to the noise around mm -hmm. me. Um, but mm -hmm. I take that time to, you know, be grateful. Um, sometimes I'm thinking about stuff I need to do uh, for for business. Mm -hmm. But I, it's my it's my me time. And that's me getting away from the kids, um, just getting away from life for about an hour and a half. And it helps, it just, it, it, I can't say I, I don't sleep well at night anyway, but th there are some, day, some nights that I do get pretty good sleep. Quality sleep. Mm -hmm. Might not mm -hmm. be long, but it's quality. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I it's, it's for me, a, it's my personal challenge for me. Gotcha. Gotcha, um, gotcha. It's me showing me I love me. Mm. It's me showing mm -hmm. self care. It's a part mm -hmm. of my self care. Um, yeah. It's a part of me re um, redirecting negative thoughts, uh, feelings. It's uh, a habit that I've, I've come to and actually enjoy. Um, again, it's just it's just me showing people and proving to myself that I am loved. I am enough. You are worth. Be having a healthy life you are worth um you're worth it right. go out and take care of yourself because mm -hmm. one of my things i, I like to say, tell people um people treat you how you treat you mm -hmm. so if you treat yourself like sugar honey iced tea mm -hmm. then everybody else is going to treat you like sugar honey iced tea as well <laughs> right so, right um for me that's what walking is and yes. uh, i don't i came up with this I just typed it out and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna put it on my t-shirt. But I wanted it to be something like catchy. And I found a little little lady walking, like, oh, look at the kitty. <laughs> <laughs> and now here you go. <laughs> but this oh, is walking to yeah. wellness, mind, body, and spirit. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the thing is is that not every 
exercise, every, every exercise needs to be this all out pounding, pounding, pounding weight right. high intensity kind yeah. of thing. Sometimes we do need to bring it down. And I always, you know, when I always showed my, my favorite thing to do when I want to kind of like disconnect and um, uh, really kind of connect with God is I'll go to a park and I will just be in the nature of, you know, and I'll just walk through the park. And that brings down all of that, that conversation, that chatter, that noise in my head. Mm -hmm. And I can just, like I said, you know, disconnect to reconnect. And that's something that I definitely uh, compliment and commend you, you know, on doing because uh, people don't know the value of just being able to, to do something to be active. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, at first you were just watching, 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 watching. And that's yep. where I can get stuck, <laughs> you know, in the watching phase. And so you actually had enough courage and enough self-care and love for yourself. Mm -hmm. to say, you know, let me get up and actually do something and be something more and ask more of myself. And mm -hmm. so once again, I definitely commend you on, on taking those steps. Now, um, yeah, so now, the, you, you know, you, earlier you talked about, you know, our community with regards to mental and emotional health and how we don't talk about it. And these things are really kind of like, you know, uh, uh, buried deep within ourselves uh, when it comes to being able to uh, speak about our status in terms of our mental and emotional health and our well-being. Men, I think we have a real problem with being able to speak on our, our mental and emotional health. Uh, women, I, I always see that you guys have a better way of, of either connecting with each other and being able to share your, your issues with each other. But men, we want to kind of like, you know, have this block Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so did you find that to be the case for, you know, uh, for men that you, you know, either, you know, spoken with or counseled, whichever one? And it's so disheartening. Yeah. But unfortunately, that is how we have been raised generation uh -huh. after generation. Men mm -hmm. have been, uh, our young men are being raised to believe that it's, it's, you're being too feminine if you're want, if you're expressing uh, your emotions mm -hmm. or you're, you it's a sign of weakness if you if you say that you're feeling depressed or or uh, you're feeling anxious mm -hmm. um, and I think it is harder for men because society and our culture has made it that way. Mm -hmm. I know for me, uh, my son and I, we started start speaking stop stigma. Uh, mm -hmm. which is a mental health advocacy group that's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, right after, I had already been diagnosed, but my, when my father passed, uh, my son started really um, displaying, some, displaying some really concerning behaviors. Um, so we took him in to um, the uh, psychologist, and, and he, of course, was diagnosed with AD, ADHD, which I'm not surprised. I, was, mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw those signs mm -hmm. quickly. Um, but he was also diagnosed with adjustment disorder. Uh, he mm -hmm. had a hard time really getting used to the fact that, you know, my dad, his grandfather was not here anymore. He, he didn't, I, that was his first, his first experience with death. Mm -hmm. And that was difficult for him. I mean, mm -hmm. 30, for 30, 30 days straight, he came in uh, me and his dad's room at the time, and he would sleep at the foot of the bed, but he would whimper all night. Mm -hmm. And it was so sad. Um, but when we got the diagnosis, um, we, he and I sat at the table. We went Facebook Live, and we were in the, um, talking about, you know, dealing with um, the, the diagnosis. And um, I, we, I talked to him about how he felt about it. And we both said it was important for everybody to understand that mental illness is not a weakness. It's right. a sickness. It's nothing that um, that should be frowned upon or um, should be, people should be made to feel ashamed about. Um, it's just like having any other disease, heart disease, diabetes. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are real open about those types of issues. But when it comes to mental illness, it's like, oh, shh. Don't say nothing. Don't let nobody else. Don't tell nobody that. Yeah. And and 
if I know for, for us, we decided that's not going to be the case. We need people to understand that you can live a normal and healthy life with mental illness. Right. It's, 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 it's yeah. treatable, but you have to have the, you have to get the proper diagnosis and you have to get the right treatment. Yeah. And being an environment, I think we have to, in our families, put a safe environment around our children to express yes. what they're feeling and help them understand this is how you manage what your emotions are. We got to learn it for ourselves <laughs> so that we can pass it on. Um, a lot of times we were watching something earlier today and it was two police officers that uh, officers in Los Angeles that were homicide detectives. And they were talking about the connection because of their connection to the community. The woman was saying, you know, gosh, we feel so much. This is not just, oh, somebody died. This is, we're connected. We feel mm -hmm. this. The man as they're driving goes, yeah, well, we're just weak like that. I was like, what a horrible thing to say to, that you, because you feel something that it's weakness. You know, we tell little boys, boys don't cry, you know, and all of these things. So I think we've got to set up within our own families, healthy, safe environments. Very important. Express what they're feeling. Um, and because if we're not their safe place, where are they going to go? You know, <laughs> so we got to, you know, start putting the safe place in, not only for ourselves, but for our children as well. Um, especially in this environment, you know, because kids at this point now even are, homeschooling, home more, all of these things. Do you mm -hmm. feel like right now um, that the mental health industry is, is overwhelmed? Do you feel like that there's enough supports in place? We can, we're doing all that we can to help individuals. Do you feel like we're overwhelmed in the mental I mean, health industry? I, I think overall the healthcare <laughs> is overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and I mean, that, that's the truth in mental, mental health is a part of health care. Yeah. Um, and I think the whole system is overwhelmed. But I want to, I, I would dare to say, I put some of that blame on ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't do enough to take care of ourselves, mm -hmm. to, to keep from having to overwhelm the health care mm -hmm. or mental health system. We have to take some responsibility and be accountable for our own health. Mm -hmm. Mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. We, when we continue to deny or not do the things that we know we should be doing, then yes, the system gets overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It does. So, and then for mental health, it's not, you know, it's not a lot of people who look like you and me mm -hmm. who can understand from a cultural standpoint how our mental and emotional health are affected by society and by the culture. Um, yeah. So we, we, there's a, there's some things that can be improved on, on, on all fronts. Mm -hmm. One, we have to take initiative mm -hmm. and then we have to, you know, get involved in our own mental and emotional health and physical health. Um, and then that way we can help the, the um, industry out yeah. Um, yeah. by yeah. doing more to take care of ourselves, following, you know, the, the, guidelines i mean it's not perfect heck i'm not perfect i mean because i know one of my things and i like to eat i can't eat mm -hmm. much now because i had i had um gastro bypass in 2007 so that helped me so i maintained uh my weight when i lost it um up until the point i got my dad when he became sick i did gain about 30 or 40 pounds back mm -hmm. so after that you know, I was like, okay, I got to get this off. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no. <laughs> so I had to take back control of my health. Mm -hmm. I had to make the choice to do it. And a yeah. lot of people are not taking, making the choice to do it. They're choosing otherwise. Yeah. And just like with our health, sometimes we wait too late. Sometimes we don't go to the doctor to get the help that we need until it's too late instead of doing the maintenance. And it's the same mm -hmm. thing with uh, even therapy. I appreciate the company that I work for because now they're opening up just, you know, before you have an event, a mental or emotional, mm -hmm. event, here are some, you got six times this year that you can just talk to somebody mm -hmm. before it hits crisis. Just use this as part of, like you said, your self-care. 
so that we don't wait too late because we do that with our physical health. Sometimes we wait till we're, you know, good mm -hmm. to the part before we go to the doctor, but we do that mentally and emotionally too. Mm -hmm. We wait until now it's a crisis. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that plays into our community a lot of times because then you've got young men who are out there, young black men who are out there who really need mental and emotional help when their families make the call because they're having a crisis and police come and we know what ends up happening. When right. it was a it's mental and emotional crisis, mm -hmm. we know what happens and we lose lives. And so we got to stop waiting so late that when you and I as parents see it with our children, when we see it in ourselves, that we start taking, you know, the reins and getting some help a lot sooner. You know, I, um, I work with a young man who uh, is uh, dealing with some, uh, you know, some emotional issues. I mean, he's gone through, uh, you know, the foster care system. And so you, mm. can, you can sense, you know, the, the anger sometimes, you know, so uh, when I'm working with him, uh, he just, he just, you, like I say, you can see it and you can feel it. And so sometimes, you know, after our sessions, you know, I'll ask him, you know, we'll just have a conversation, you know, so, you know, one time I've asked him, you know, do you ever cry? And, and, you know, he says, sometimes I do, but I don't really do it, you know, I don't really do it. And so I guess it gets to that point where when he does cry, it's to that point. But for the most part, there's been that programming, like we spoke about, that men don't cry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then on top of that, we don't talk about these things. Right. So, so, you know, we have an interesting um, uh, relationship uh, because uh, I am learning so much from him. And I only pray that he's learning, you know, from me also. But at the same time, too, like I said, I, when I say that I'm learning so much from him, uh, he is just showing me how powerful of an individual he is in even wanting to, um, to, to, to do something about his health. And, and he knows that that gives him, you know, uh, that outlet. He knows that that gives him that, that, that relief or that release. Mm -hmm. And so he, he thrives on that. And I'm so proud of him uh, because once again, he's, he's taken the initiative to actually step out and say, like you said earlier, I love me. And uh, mm -hmm. I wish that our young men could actually take that approach versus going somewhere like into the gangs that they think that, mm -hmm. you know, they are, are going to find some type of, of, of love, some type of connection when it's really not there. And so, uh, yeah, so I just definitely wanted to um, uh, share that with you. Now, um, as we come to a little bit of a close here, you know, uh, one of the things that uh, if you could uh, kind of like it, share with us, you know, maybe two, or two things that, you know, could help someone listening right now, um, you know, help someone in that, you know, that's struggling, what would they be? Uh, two, one or two things. Well, one of the things I would would say is that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You are not alone. There's so many other people who are going through some some of the same situations are similar. Um, and even if the the, the experiences are, are are different, the 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 commonality is the fact that there is a a mental and emotional um, struggle that is taking place for whatever reason. And that's the commonality. Mm -hmm. Two, I would say, again, realize that mental illness is not a weakness, it's a sickness, just like any other um, disease. Um, and, you know, I'll offer, of course, my support to them. I know there's three, but that's important. No, that is totally fine. That, it's it's important for them for people to understand there there are places of safety, mm. real places of safety, real places with with, with judgment free zones. Because start speaking, stop stigma, is a judgment free zone. And I always uh, make it my business to, of course, I'm scanning and I'm you know monitoring what's being posted because I'm protecting the space. It's important to protect your mental and your emotional space at all times from negativity. Mm -hmm. And so as I work to do that for me, I'm also working to do that in the group. So people that are in the group 
can have that space of safety yeah. um, to express their uh, mental and emotional vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would, of course, offer, you know, support. Okay. To them. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So where, where can people find you uh, on either the social media platforms or out there on the internet, wherever? So you can go to um, my website is www.kimcess.com, www.kimcess.com. You can find me um, on the website. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm probably the only Nakikia <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the world. Yeah. And my name is spelled N A K I K I A, last name Wilson. You can just pull it up, and I'm on Facebook. My page is public, um, and you can ask to be a part of the Start Speaking, Stop Stigma um, Mental and Emotional Advocacy Group as well. Um, if you want to reach me, you can um, call or text 919 9640546. Our email starts speaking stop stigma at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, man. Uh, this was really powerful. And I this is a conversation, like you said, you know, we need to start having. Mm -hmm. It's we don't talk about. We can we talk about all the ways of just being well, you know, such as, you know, making sure our bodies look right, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. But we don't pay attention enough to what's going on here. And I think that's something that, once again, we really do need to start paying attention to. So thank you for so much for being in your space and your 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 place where you're, you know, you have the spirit spirit to serve and to help. Mm -hmm. Because that we, in bottom line, we need you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> we need you. We need we need individuals like yourself. And the thing, the good thing about it is, is that you can relate to anyone because you've been there. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been there. Me speaking with someone about you know mental health, I'm pretty sure there's some big issues. I need to probably you know set up some time to speak with someone. I think we all probably need mm -hmm. to set up some time to speak with someone. I I I. I you know, some of my clients, they, they do this on a regular basis. And it's not because they feel as though they are weak. It's just they just always want to be better mm -hmm. and get better. And, and so I, I applaud anyone that has that, you know, that courage to say, listen, yeah, I need to speak with somebody because something's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I it's, think it's one of the bravest things a person can do. Yeah. Is yeah, yeah. Admit that, you know what, I really need help. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a yeah, brave yeah. move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same way with, you know, personal training. When someone reaches out to me and says, you know, I don't have the answers. I'm looking, I, I need somebody to help me in this, in this journey. And so I always let them know you've done something that most people won't do. And I don't know of any person that has achieved any uh, a level of success, be it business, be it, you know, financial, be it uh, health or what have you their journey has always uh, never been on their own. They've always had someone to either mentor them or coach them along the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need areas in all of, we need coaches and mentors in all of these areas, mm -hmm. in the area of exercise, health and wellness, in the area of mental wellness, in the area of financial wellness, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual wellness. We need coaches, we need people. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that, that's been probably the whole blockage of this whole thing since COVID has come upon us is that we have, we have to do things this way, which is cool. But at the same time too, when, you know, it's, there's nothing that can replace that actual physical connection, you know, with people. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Oh, you want to say anything, mm -hmm. honey? But I want to thank you once again uh, for hanging out with for, you know, this, 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 this time here. Um, and once again, we need you. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah, you want to say any last words or anything? Uh, anything? Um, yeah, well, I, people can reach me, like I said, on my website at www.kimsales.com. Mm -hmm. Call. Um, also, be sure to um, join um, me live in the group. On yeah. Monday, I was invited by the Presidential Inaugural Committee to actually speak on bringing, uh, breaking free from 
um, generations of toxic behavior. So uh, it'll be me and um, two other young ladies um, who will be hosting that event. Um, so it starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time. I'm not sure what where, where y'all where y'all are right now, but yeah, and and it's we're gonna um, stream live um, in the group. So be sure to you know come join. Um, you can go to the group page now and click on the link to register for the event as well. But otherwise, you can just look at us, you know, participate live um, in the event on Monday. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much once again. So everyone, thank you for giving us your time this evening or this afternoon or morning, whenever you're watching this, uh, this broadcast here. And uh, we're going to continue to bring these individuals to you every week, if not every, you know, other two, every two weeks, whatever the case, we're just going to be out here helping, you know, people and bringing people to the forefront that, that are out here in the trenches doing what they do. So this is another episode of Living Your Best Life. And once again, we want to thank uh, Nikikia. Nikikia. <laughs> I think I did it right. I did it right. I had to like, you know, get those accents right. But, <laughs> once again. But anyway, you guys take care and um, we'll catch you next time. All right. We love y'all. I'll be good. Bye-bye. Peace.